second interview that we've had and we'll be covering a lot of the things that we've already discussed so if you've heard the first uh, interview listeners you'll probably find that many of the things that we've discussed uh, in that one will be on this one as well so sorry about that so Magnar um, what should we talk about <laughs> Well, I guess we could talk about uh, maybe Mission Improbable. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I think I've heard a little bit about that. Uh, okay. <laughs> In fact, before we do that, I was just teasing you. I'm sorry. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? You know, what do you do? Well, I'm. Uh, well, my name is Magnus Jensen. I'm a. I work as a level designer, and as a hobby, I also design levels. So that's pretty much <laughs> all I do. Uh, all right. Well, I'm sure you do other things, but w where do you work? Are you allowed to say where you work? Oh yeah, sure. I work at uh, Avalanche. Uh, it's a company that made uh, the Just Cause games and uh, and other games like Renegade Ops and stuff like that. Okay. How long have you been with them? Uh, almost two years now. Okay. And where's that based? Uh, it's in Stockholm, where I also okay. live. So. All right. Okay. Good. And your job title is level designer, yes? Yeah, exactly. All right. And uh, what engines do you normally use for your job? Uh, it's like in-house engines, so nothing publicly released or anything like that. Uh, okay. so it's like internal tech technology. All right. So how is it different from the the, the like the hobby you've got now? <laughs> uh, well, it's very different. I mean, uh, we're making like open-world games. Uh, you know, real-time editing, no compilation times or anything like that. And the stuff I do at home is maybe a bit more work, but uh, it ends up like as a nicer result. I would say. Okay. All right. So, how long have you been uh, modding then? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, I'm 29 now, and I started when I was like 16, I think. So it's been a while. Yeah. All right. What are you going to say when I was six? It was long. Oh, that's a long time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And um, you made Mission Improbable, or in fact, you made Mission Improbable in three parts. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Why? Uh, well, I mean, okay, so if I had released it in one part, it would have been started in 2009 and released in 2012, uh, which wouldn't have been that great. <laughs> okay. So, so I wanted people to to play the, play the maps as soon as possible so I could get, like, uh, like it helps the motivation if you see people playing your, your level and liking it and giving you feedback and all stuff like that. So that allowed me to, like, fix stuff as I went along even though like the releases weren't that close together I uh, managed to fix stuff in the previous levels as well okay so the first release was just called Mission Improbable yeah. and it was the listening post um, mission which ended with the jalopy driving into the tunnel yes yeah exactly okay and when you first started to make that how much of it was planned out either in your mind or on paper or computer before you started um, very little. <laughs> okay, uh, that's not the answer I was hoping for. Okay. No, really, yeah, no, but I mean, uh, you know, I had lots of cool ideas that I wanted to use, but uh, there weren't, like, any overarching story arcs or anything like that. I mean, uh, things got added along the way, and, you know, it just evolved. From, okay. Yeah. So we said that it's been released in three parts. So uh, how did you say to yourself, I'm going to release three parts, but each part I'm just going to add on as I go along, or was there a, a, an overarching guide that you wanted to, to you know, like a, an overarching story that you wanted to tell? Uh, well, the overarching story, I mean, I had the idea about, you know, the first level you're, you're on your own, the second one you meet up your, with your friends, and the third one uh, you help your friends, uh, which seems to work. Um, mm -hmm. But the release uh, method was basically done so that I could, you know, get a boost in, in morale and, and uh, self-esteem when I see people play the levels, and also to be able to fix stuff in the in the already released level when I release the next one, so I could constantly like tweak it and, and evolve it. Okay, um, I have to admit I'm not really a big fan of how you've done it, and <laughs> Minerva did it exactly the same way, and. I mean, I can't deny that perhaps the two best, or definitely within the, the top five, the two best releases have been done the same way, because I don't like replaying those levels, and unless you've made a huge change like you did in the third part, which we'll come to, um, 
I know that you want to change, you know, maybe the mistakes or small changes from the first one, but you're almost forcing people to play that again. How do you respond to that? Uh, it's true. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I've been aware of that problem as well, uh, which is why it was really great that we managed to change change it up so much during this final release. I mean, if uh, if I hadn't had the, the help of Rick, uh, it it would have been pretty boring to play the old three-year-old levels once more. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I released the second one, uh, I went back to the first one and like eased up on the gameplay and stuff because. When they're released by themselves, uh, I cram in so much gameplay that because you want people to, you know, be able to play it for like half an hour uh, if they took the time to download it. So that <laughs> therefore you like it's a, like a grunt fest. But once you have two levels, you can like ease up on the combat on the first one and and make it a, like a better experience. I would say. That's a very interesting point. I have to admit, I've never really considered that. You're right. If if you release those individual episodes and you play them, you play them for what they are, but if they're part of something greater that you play almost at the same time, then then that significantly changes the experience that you want us to have. Yeah, exactly. you, get, you get a better flow and there's better pacing and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. I certainly can't argue with that. Um, you mentioned Rick. Now, uh, we invited Rick to this uh, interview, but he politely declined for you know whatever reason. Um, tell the, the listeners who he is and how you became involved with him and what he does. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, I've known Rick for uh, a short while, uh, or like a year or two. Uh, we we started talking when we were hanging out on the same like level sign or environment artist forums. And uh, then he started working in Stockholm as well. He works at DICE, the company that makes uh, the Battlefield games and such. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we started hanging out. We had a beer someday. He said that he had played through the, the Mission Improbable levels and he knew that I was working on the third one. So he wanted to help me out and, and make them a bit better or cooler. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's also been doing 3D, 3D art for, yeah, I don't know how long. <laughs> he worked on Crisis 2, didn't he? Yeah, Crisis 2, Battlefield 3, and, and some other games as well. Okay, I mean, I'll link um, to him in uh, the, the Planet Philip uh, podcast when I release it, but um, his website is just um, fantastic for seeing some of the work he's done. Of course, it's difficult from a non-professional's point of view to look at a screenshot and say how much of that is Rick's work, but at the same time, you can still see that, you know, whoever worked on it, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. So, how did you decide um, what kind of change that Rick was going to be involved with? I mean, I'm presuming that you had final say over what was changed, but at the same time, you, you know, he's working with you and he's an expert of what he does. So, how did that work? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I trust him, like, a lot. So while I was making the the third level, he was uh, working on the the first one, the lighthouse level, and mm -hmm. he had like you know free hands, do whatever he want. You know, we want the gameplay to stay similar, but we want to give it like a, a fresh coat of paint, and it should look really awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so so we always had like like this rotation that we worked on. So when I worked on the the second level, he would work on the third and would like rotate around so so he would like go in and add lots tons of art stuff and uh, make the level a, lo a lot more epic mm -hmm. and then I'd come in afterwards and like with a broom and like sweep up and uh, and optimize and yeah work on all that stuff okay so, but I mean he never changed any of the the general or the basic layout he just prettified it if, if, if that's yeah. the right way of describing it Exactly. Well, he built actually uh, like say half of the intermission level, the the small level between the first and the second one. Okay. Um, he made the the area where you find actually the gravity gun and stuff like that. Okay. All so right. So yeah, he has he has talent as a level designer as well. All right. Now, um, what do you say to the people who say, <laughs> well, I could be part of this group, that they don't like the look of the final release compared to the original? <laughs> oh, I definitely. I mean, I can understand them. I think uh, we wanted it to have like a more uh, like autumn feel, and also for each uh, each level to have like a uh, uh, progression to it, so that you know you start out during the day in the first one, uh, you 
go through the tunnel for a while. You come out on the other end, it's more like midday, starting to turn into evening. Mm -hmm. And the, the the third and last one, it's like night. And yeah, uh, it also allowed us to like use the content in all in all the levels, uh, even though all the levels look quite uh, different from each other. Okay. But I actually, mean... uh, yeah, actually, like the color correction, uh, it's been like a, a constant negative that people have brought up if they have anything negative to say about it. So mm -hmm. what we've been planning to do is like uh, create a, like an optional patch which creates uh, where you can like patch in new color correction which makes it a bit more, um, what should I say, like happy colors I would, yeah. Okay. And how would users use that then? Uh, they would just have to download the patch and, and install it into a Mission Improbable folder and it would automatically be applied when they when they play it. Oh, okay, so it, it wouldn't be giving them a choice, it would just be removing it. Yeah, exactly. It, no, I wouldn't remove it, it would change it so that it has different color correction, so that it's not so so gray and moody in okay. first level, for example, but it's more, uh, I don't know the English word for it, but, but yeah, it looks a bit happier, I would say. Okay, all right. I mean, a couple of people on my, my website uh, said that they weren't happy with it, and Miga, who's a, a mapper that you know frequents the site, he gave everybody a console command. Um, which is oh, yeah. just, you know Matt color correction zero. I think it was simply Matt underscore color correction zero. Um, and somebody asked me how they can do that straight away, and I told them how to add it to the you know the parameters of the launch. Um, yeah, you can also go into like advanced video settings and set color correction to disable. Uh, okay. So it's basically um, the same thing. Okay. All right. And. Um, I think the real problem, from my point of view, was that I'd experienced the almost, and it's not exactly the right word, but the almost cartoonish colors that Half-Life uh, 2 Episode 2 has, and as a comparison, that was probably, you know, what I didn't like. If I hadn't played any of the previous first two levels, and I'd seen it as it was, I think I wouldn't even be, you know, talking about it. Yeah, exactly. You have those memories uh, stored away in your head, and when <laughs> when you see it, then it's completely different, and yeah, uh, it's exactly. hard to hard to get that update. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, I know that you can't list every single change that you made, but c can we talk about some of the changes that you made for the first two levels, not graphically, but otherwise? When I played the second level, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the second level. What's the name of the second level? Uh, Reverse Advance. I think. Isn't that the third one? No, that's uh, exciting finale. Oh, okay. All right. So reverse reverse advance, which is a good name as well. Huh? Um, the battle and there's spoilers here, listeners. So if you if you don't want to listen, fingers to ears or something. The battle with the the hunters at the end seemed much easier. Was it? Yeah. Because I'm so cool and I'm really good. Or did you make it easier? Uh, I didn't make it easier. Yeah. Before you you okay. you would fight like four hunters in like waves of two. Uh -huh. Now there's now there's only two, and again uh -huh. that's that that comes back to what I what I said earlier about when I released the levels uh, like by themselves or yeah. when Mim Two was the final level, I would cram in more gameplay so that people get more game time out of it. But now I could like ease up on it since there's a whole new level afterwards. And yeah, yeah, so. no, I mean, it it does make sense. It do, it does make sense. What other changes between the first two levels um, have you made? Uh, well, let's see in the. In the second one, we removed like the whole bridge scenario where the bridge breaks and you have to like jump down and go under it. Oh yeah, and come true. Up on I completely the... forgot about that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that was like a weak point in the level because it didn't really make much sense. I think a lot of people, when they saw the bridge explode, they would just assume that that's the wrong way and turn back, and okay. actually have to go over to like the gap and and look down and see where the where the path was going. So that's something that flowed really strangely and. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty happy I, I removed that, actually. Okay. Anything else? Uh, let's see. Well, in the first one, there was like a APC driving around. Uh, removed that. In the, the first one, you also had like the, the gunship battle while you're at the lighthouse, where you'd like shoot it for a while, and then it would fly away, and you'd see it again. Uh, this time, uh, it flew away as soon as you go into the lighthouse again, because... Uh, okay because it was like weirdly paced when it came to like a, a semi gunship battle. So now you get the rocket launcher much later in the level. Okay. I mean, I have to admit that when I played both of the first two levels the second time, I played differently because I felt that I knew what was coming and I wasn't so interested in 
playing, I was more interested in passing, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, like a safari almost, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I knew generally what was going to happen. Maybe there'd be some changes, maybe not. But I just wanted to get to the third level as quickly as possible. Now, I, I recognize that I could have just started that from the main menu, but I felt that I wanted to go through that whole experience. And perhaps I didn't do it properly. I should have maybe taken my time. Because as soon as the, the gunship destroyed the top part of the lighthouse, I just ran like hell. Maybe I would have, in the past, tried to shoot it down, but <laughs> and I didn't even notice I didn't have a rocket launcher, and you know I just ran. So yeah, uh, well, that was what you're supposed to do. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, let's talk about uh, beta testers because you talk about people, you know, not looking down and those kind of things. Um, what kind of beta testing program did you have for the first two parts, and then for the final three parts? Uh, it's been pretty much the same. I mean, I know a lot of uh, like level designers and, and people that work with games and so on, and uh, I let them them test the levels, I make them record demos. I sit and watch through the demos, and uh, yeah, I constantly add in more testers as the development goes along, so that you always get like fresh eyes on the, mm. on the on the project. Because like you said, like once you played it two or three times, you sort of go into autopilot mode and you just breeze through it. Uh, whereas a, a new player will always like bring out you know proper problems, yeah, and explore in a different way and, a, and yeah, you know exactly. you know approach different problems or one problem in a different way, all sorts of things. So how many testers do you think that you used in the end? Mm, let's see, I guess around twelve or something like that. Twelve, okay, all right, it's a good number. I mean, many times you get uh, people who don't don't test enough, and I always talk to the people about. How many testers did you use and how long did it test in? Did you actually change anything significantly based on the feedback from the testers? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, there was a lot of work with uh, the puzzles and also the, the layout in the, in the third level. A lot mm -hmm. of simplifications there because it was a bit too complex. It was too hard to read, uh, etc. People got lost, lost or stuck or lots of things. Okay. But uh, we were actually planning on doing like a, a, a post mortem of the development later on, so that we, because you know we have like a million screenshots taken during development, so it would be cool to show off like how ugly and horrible and broken the the, the mod has been, and then where it is right now. Or how different? Perhaps we we'll use oh, a, yeah. a less negative description. Oh yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I mean, I was. Uh, Meaning the, the third level, but yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm just teasing you. I'm sorry. Um, I got stuck on the third level once. I ran around in circles for a long time, thinking that I'd somehow got caught, you know, caught in an area that I wasn't. But um, it, it didn't take me long. I mean, have you had many reports of people really getting stuck? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it was it was one section which had been like a common problem. That was the one where uh, where you return to like that slanted room okay. when there's like a, a battle between the combine and the. Uh, oh, that's where combine. I got stuck. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I think we we made it a bit easier now, but before it was like really hard. I mean, the the bridge or the walkway you would go up, like okay. that you exit on now, that wasn't like destroyed from the start, and it would get destroyed after a while. And uh, so okay. yeah, it was it was pretty hard. All right. Okay. And um. The flowers. What, what was that? <laughs> Tell me about that. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, we just had an idea to to like reward people that take their time and, and check every square inch of the level. Uh, so yeah, well, there's three of them hidden out in all the the large or one in each large level. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, forgive me for being negative. Um, I always think you should tell players that right at the beginning. Yeah, that's true. Uh, because if I found one in the se in fact, I didn't find any, but if I found one in the second level, then I'd have been really frustrated because I couldn't go back to the first level, so I'd have to replay it. So yeah, that's, that's my right. argument. It's probably a pretty poor implementation. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't necessarily poor. I mean, it was. It, you could argue that it's a perfect way of getting people to replay it. Because if yeah. they don't know anything and then they get to the end and then they see you found zero flowers, it's like, damn, right, I'm playing this again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So well. I suppose you could argue that. but <laughs> yeah. um, So whose idea were, were the flowers? Uh, I think we just came up with it together, like some adding some secrets to the level somehow. All right. 
I mean, uh, flowers is what we landed on. Yeah, no, I mean, so I think it's a it's a really good idea. Now, um, it's available from at least three places. It's available from Planet Philip, from MissionImprobable.org, and from ModDB. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Do you happen to know the download figures for Mission Improbable? Uh, Could you uh, check? Uh, yeah, let's see. Is it easy to, for you to check? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I know like about. I mean, approximately. Uh, I'm not looking to the like the the nearest one or anything. Well, I think it's like three or four thousand downloads so far. Mm, okay, that's good. All right, because I was about to say that I'm really disappointed, and not w with you or anything you've done, but with the general number of total total downloads. We've got approximately at the time of recording 1,800 from ModDB, 500 from my site, and if you say between you know let's say three and a half thousand, um, we're looking at four, five, nearly six thousand. Um, oh no, I mean I mean uh, like total, even including like the Pan Philip and ModDB. So I think we have like you know maybe. A thousand, two thousand, maybe from uh, the Mission Improbable side. So I mean, oh, okay, so 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 about a total of three thousand five hundred or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay, how do you feel about that? Uh, well, of course. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> in the same boat as you. There, I'm a bit disappointed, but you know, uh, it was released one week ago, and we just continuously promote it now. That's like my only, the only thing I do when I get home. Well. Okay. But uh, but I do it like one hour every every evening. Like go to different forums, post about it there, get people to, to play it and stuff like that. I yeah. think it's I think it's uh, we have to like break out of the the Half Life Two community sites and into like regular gaming sites. For yeah, I mean stuff like this should be on um, rock paper scissors, uh, rock paper shotgun, Kaitaku, and you know some of the the other really really big sites. I mean. I don't want you to think I'm being too negative about um, the mod I'm about to mention, but it just seems very unfair that Cry of Fear has like 120,000 downloads, and it might be fantastic, really, it might be, but yours only has, you know, just less than four. And <laughs> nah, but that's um, fine. I mean, uh, Cry of Fear is like right. a, a completely new game as well, so there's there's something there, and they had like a, a lot longer to like build up hype as mm, well. I know. I know. Because I think it was developed for like four years or something. Like that. Yeah, but it was I mean, over that, a long time. Yeah, and that is also, you know, a really a great a great mod. So, but it's interesting, from my point of view as uh, um, an amateur promoter, that you know, <laughs> to try and analyze why something becomes popular and something something else doesn't, and it's 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 never always simple. And yeah. in this case, it's clear that it's not just the quality of the work. Nice. I mean, you know, it's, you have to get out there and, and, and tell people about it, and that's what I'm doing right now, no. uh, constantly contacting people. But yeah, we have like a slow trickle right now of uh, a couple of hundred downloads per day, so uh, I'm just going to continue promoting it <laughs> until until at least we break 10,000, that will be yeah. happy-ish. Yeah. Happy-ish, no, and, uh, and you're right. I mean, it will continue to be downloaded for the next few years and you know it, it'll be called what they call the long tail yeah, which exactly. is where it just you know goes down slowly but it just I'm a little surprised that it was you know so low can we jump topics for a little bit for a second do you mind yeah sure whoop servatory uh, yeah what what happened for you to just sort of you know put uh, mission improbable aside and and start building that was that maybe an experiment that you were hoping to include in the last uh, part no, not really, but I mean, I had that idea about playing co-op with yourself, and I really wanted to, like, develop something quick around that, which ended up taking, like, almost a year, but, uh, but yeah, so it was basically, I had made that co-op with yourself gameplay mechanic in, like, a test level, and then I wanted to develop, like, a real level around it, and it ended up taking a lot longer time than I uh, expected. Okay. I mean, did you continue Mission Improbable development at the same time, but just less time, or did you put it aside completely? Uh, it was pretty much put aside completely. Pretty okay. much. I mean, except for like you know writing down ideas and stuff like that. But it wasn't in. I wasn't actually like level designing Mission Improbable oh. at the same time. All right. So let's go to the exciting finale. So again, this is a reminder. There are serious spoilers in this part. Um, that was a fantastic piece of work. You should be hugely proud. Not that the other two parts aren't fantastic, but that last part was amazing. 
Um, <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. How um, how much did it change from maybe your initial idea? Uh, it changed completely. I mean, I seriously started developing the third part maybe in uh, let's see, maybe October or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's when I started creating the, the third level for real, and uh, it went super slowly because. I had like an idea of what I wanted to do, like the huge underground cavern and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and I laid it out, and I don't know, it, it didn't click, but I, I continued working on it, so I would like basically place like one brush every day, and then go and do something else, so eventually I did like a complete redesign, and uh, it ended up looking like it does now. All right, okay. I mean, how hard was it to get the trains to go down in the diagonal elevator? I mean, I'm not very technical with regards to... <laughs> You know, no, that was, that was super hammer. Easy. It was super easy. Okay, so it was more about the concept. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the initial plan was to have like those uh, vertical railways and stuff like that, uh, have it like that uh, as a constant theme. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the ending, you would escape on one of those, which were reversed and going back up again. And okay. like the helicopter would chase uh, chase you while you were traveling through the facility. And that ended up being a complete nightmare, so <laughs> I skipped it. Okay. All right. And there's a new mechanic in the third part, which was to do with the force field. Now, a couple of people said that it wasn't obvious. I ha happened to disagree with them. I felt that the placement of the buttons and the outline around the pods was, was quite clear. How, how did that particular puzzle come about? Uh, that was also like a prototype like a really long time ago. It was just when I was like having a spawning ideas around what would happen in the level. So there was a lot of things that were cut, but that's one of the few puzzles that actually made it through. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so uh, well, it it sort of makes sense. Like you you block the shield from two sides, and it yeah. wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be able to connect anymore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. And um, the hunters and the walkways. Um, I didn't really enjoy that part very much, but that's not important because some people will like other things. But I felt it was quite easy. I, felt, I mean, I'm not an expert with uh, hunters, but I felt it was too easy to evade them. And I think, I mean, I didn't kill them. I just avoided them and ran past them. Yeah, exactly. That, that's something that, like, it, it's almost like a 50-50 split there. Someone stay and, stays and fights them. And some people will just like panic and, and run away and take the other way back upstairs. <laughs> I, I call it a controlled retreat. I wouldn't call it panic, but okay. Yeah, exactly. But so, so that was something that, like, when a tester said that to me, that uh, oh, I just ran away and, and took the other way back upstairs. And then I said like, okay, but okay, I'm gonna fix that for the next version. He suggested that, well, why not just leave it in? I mean, it's, mm. a, it's a viable. Play, a way to play it, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think too many designers, sorry to interrupt you, I think too many designers feel that every player wants to kill everything before we move on, and sometimes we just need to accept, I can't win this particular battle, Yeah. I need to conserve ammo and health and just get out as quickly as possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, that's um, that's a cool, cool way for me. All right, so, jumping back to the second part <laughs> for a moment, the yeah. introduction of the new character. Oh, yeah. Mm. I was saddened to see that my voice acting had gone, but yeah, completely sorry, understand. No, it's okay. You're, 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 still, you're still credited. <laughs> I know, thank you. Um, I, I completely understand why. Um, t tell me about that character, though. He's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that was also like a, a mutation because we wanted to uh, be able to uh, iterate voice acting super quickly. Mm -hmm. And the logical way to do that is using uh, text to speech programs. You put, you write in, and then you, uh, then you play it up in the game, and you can easily see if it's too short or too long or whatever. Um, whereas with a voice actor, you have to like write a script, send it out, wait a few days, get it back. Maybe if you want to change something, you add a few days to it, etc. Sure. Uh, and then we figured that okay, well now we have this text to speech, and it sounds pretty cool. And Stephen Hawking is a pretty cool guy, so uh, yeah, let's let's create a character around that. Okay, so let me make sure I understand it. What you're saying is it's possible for the, the engine to read the text? Uh, and no, no, no. No, no, you record it separately? Yeah, it's a via text ah, okay. program, yeah. All right, okay. And what about the character, though? He's very funny. Who wrote the, te uh, the script for him? Uh, that was me, actually, yeah. Well done. 
<laughs> it's hard to write funny stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you know. Th there's one ladder. It's my only weakness. You know, little things like that are like really clever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, we really wanted it. I mean, we didn't want it to be like funny that he was in a wheelchair. That was something we re really like adamant about okay. because you know we don't want him to be like a, a victim or anything like that. So we we thought out this whole idea about him being like a real badass and. Uh, what what it says on the mod DB site is like he's really experienced with fighting the combine, but he's not so experienced with like falling back or anything like that. Okay. So he's gotten pretty battle wounded <laughs> over the years. Excellent. So that was a great addition. Um, I was very surprised to see him. I, I was assuming he was going to be the final, the 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 enemy. You know, like the 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 boss battle at the end. Because oh really? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't follow mods very much, partly because uh, I'm too busy doing other things, but partly because I don't want to spoil it for myself. So when I saw him, I said, oh, that looks pretty cool. Can't wait to fight against him, and then just like didn't read what you wrote. So it was a big surprise for me to see he was on my side. <laughs> yeah, that's great. D did anybody else express that they thought he was going to be the enemy? Yeah, I've seen that around. Uh, at least one other site has said that they thought that he would be like the final boss. Yeah, yeah, he would have been a cool final boss. Um, and then, of course, we've got the very final part, and another reminder about spoilers, um, where you've managed to escape the combine facility exploding, and you sort of, you know, you get to the little, the, the wooden hut, um, and you open up the, the the container for the missiles, <laughs> and it's yeah. full of empty cans. <laughs> I yeah. swore at you when I did, when that happened. Probably a few <laughs> did as well. Yeah. Very clever. A nice little touch. And then, um, you know, he opens the door, which is great, shoots down the helicopter, and then that final part is classic. Really. <laughs> Not going to say any more than that, but it's, it's worth it just for that part. Very, yeah, very clever. It. When did you introduce that part? Uh, that was like an idea for a pretty long time since we wanted him to save you at the end. Like we wanted you to, to meet up with your rebel allies mm -hmm. towards the end and that would be really nice and uh, classic and all that stuff. But then we thought, you know, what happened now would be even funnier. So we yes. added that to that. Very, very clever. Excellent, excellent. And um, w I'm just looking through my notes. I see that Rick has said that he's going to release the assets. Have you been in contact with him about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to... to uh, like do a cleanup of the assets, make them mm -hmm. easier to like uh, sort through and all that stuff, and then we're gonna release them for the for the mod community to be able to use them. Perfect. I, I I must you know congratulate and thank you for doing that because you know people are always looking for new, really good quality assets to use to 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 keep Half Life yeah. Two interesting because with such a big break between Episode Two's release and whatever we're gonna get eventually, <laughs> yeah. people you know need new things to keep them going. So. Okay. So that's good. So what kind of things are we talking about here? Just textures, or are there sounds, or props, or...? Uh, it's, a, it's a ton of props and uh, a ton of textures as well. Okay. Yeah. There's nice. uh, pretty much... I think we, we're, we've we uh, replaced maybe 60-70% of the content in Half-Life 2 okay. when we were creating mod, so there's not that much original Half-Life 2 content around anymore, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, okay, no, it's fantastic. And um, if you were to go back in time, uh, what would you sort of say to yourself about the development of this mod? What would you say, look, don't waste time on this, do this, or change this? Or... I think, yeah, like if I could skip that whole, the whole first few months where I just sat on a, a level which was never going to be completed and tried to like force it through, uh, if I could skip that, that would be great because then I would have started this project like three months earlier or something like that. All right, okay. That's and I mean, how do you, I mean, trying to look at it from a, a new designer's point of view, what kind of advice would you give to people? I mean, if you get to the point where you're stuck, should you press through or say, okay, I mean, it, try something new? I mean, it's it's uh, it's voluntary work. You, you don't get paid for any of this stuff. And uh, if it feels too much like work, like proper work, then, you know, find a new idea and try that instead. Because like I said, you know, uh, Sitting there and placing like one brush every day and not being happy with the results is, is pretty boring and mm. not very rewarding at all. So yeah, just uh, create something you're like excited about and, and you'll have much better luck. Okay. Um, any other advice you'd give to uh, new mappers or even slightly experienced mappers? Uh, well, yeah, uh, keep it keep it pretty simple. Uh, <laughs> don't try to to bite off too much. I mean. Uh, 
creating these four levels was a huge undertaking. So I would start with, with one level, see how it goes, and then maybe create a new one. Yeah, lots of modders, especially new modders, they've got this plan for the huge mod, and they completely underestimate how much work is involved. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it is, it is actually pretty insane how much <laughs> how much it requires to, to get a, a proper release. Yeah, and I think that the, the problem is that it's it's too easy to mod, and, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I mean, imagine if you're going to build a car. I mean, building a car is like, who can build a car? But then you see lots of people modding, and you think, oh, I can do that, and you open up the hammer, and you start to make a few levels, and you think, oh, I can do this, but actually to build what you've built is hundreds, thousands of hours worth of work. Yeah, um, sure. and, you know, I mean, you, have, you have to start somewhere, so it's, it's great that people get into it, and I, I really hope like, the mod community thrives like that, because, because yeah, it, it seems to have been slowing down quite a lot lately, mm. which is a bit sad. Yeah, it is. But I think mods like yours and some other mods actually really inspire people because they see that and they think that's fantastic. And, and you know, guys sitting at his computer did that. I, I, maybe I can do that as well. And, yeah, and I hope hopefully, so. that'd be awesome. Yeah, that that'd be kind of cool. How much content do you think that you've removed? Mm, if that how makes do you sense. Mean? I mean, how how much have you made that you didn't include? Oh, uh, like maybe. As much as there's left right now. <laughs> Are you serious? Always, yeah, of course. I mean, you start out wow. with a lot of stuff, but you you, know, you strip it back until you have like the good stuff uh, remaining. Like uh, for MIMP3, I think I designed like five or six puzzles, but there's only like the, the shield puzzle, which actually remains now. Okay. Wow. That's I'm I'm really surprised. I mean, you're basically saying half. Whatever yeah. you build, only release half because only half of it's going to be good enough. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Interesting. I'll be interesting to talk to other designers about that to see how how you know whether that's true of of other levels as well or you know what about at work? I mean, I don't really know the games that you work on at work, but how much of that actually makes it out the door? Oh, that's like I would say overall in in games development, you you produce say four games, but you release like one of them in terms of content and workload content. and stuff like that. Because there's a lot of uh, waste <laughs> being created, and not in a, like a negative way, but uh, no. you know, time goes by, and if say you work on like a four-year project, the stuff that you actually the, the consumer actually buys at the end, that's like you know one year worth of development. Wow. The three first years have pretty much been replaced, updated, modified, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, so 50% is 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 nothing compared to what work what you, you do at work. I mean, you only really <laughs> a quarter. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I would actually say that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, um, what does the future hold for you? Well, uh, pretty much gonna continue <laughs> what I'm doing right now. I, I I'm happy in my job. I want to continue creating levels professionally and. Hopefully, after like a slight break, I can continue doing it on my on my own time as well. Okay, and th the company's quite happy with that, with you to make you know your separate levels. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's very okay. it's, very, I mean, very it's good. open about that. I mean, I know other professional designers who have had to stop making mods because their company you know forbade them to do that. Yeah, I heard about that as well. I think I think uh, like American companies are a bit more stricter when it comes to what you do in the spare time. Mm -hmm. Here it's it's pretty you know do what it's your it's your own spare time so okay so is there a big gaming community in Stockholm I mean you say that you you sort of had a beer with Rick I mean is there like a get together of you know game designers yeah for sure I mean uh, there's that like once every month or every two months or something like that but uh, like Rick I also know, knew from like forums before he moved to Stockholm okay and you know you you sort of connect to, to people that that do the same thing as you do all right okay. So, um, I mean, I just asked about the, the future. So, you do plan to continue making mods, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In source engines? <laughs> yeah, I don't have yeah, any. Okay, any because a few, <laughs> a few people I talk to say, oh, no, I'm bored with source now. I want to move on to, you know, Unity or UDK or something. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, well, they're, they're great engines and they have great tools and everything. But, uh, you know, that's, like I said, like, create something that you're excited about and I don't think either the UDK doesn't come with any game and if you want to mod to like Gears of War then that's great but I'm not interested in that mm -hmm. and Unity is also the same thing that's like from scratch 
So I like the Half-Life series and I want to continue doing stuff for okay. that universe. So do you play lots of single player mods? Yeah, I try to play them when they when they come out. I check your site and if there's something which is like highly rated, I'll download it and give it a go. Give it a go. And can you think of any? I mean, what what would be your favorite? Can you think of any of your favorites? Uh, probably research and development. That was like a, a really really cool and well designed mod, which showed like a lot of like creativity and, and cool mm. scripting and like you can appreciate it from two perspectives, like a level design perspective and also a, a player perspective. Okay. I mean, six months from one person? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Pretty amazing. Have you played G-String? Uh, no, what's that? Uh, this is a huge mod. Uh, when I say huge, I mean really huge. It's a complete total conversion uh, set in the future, very dystopian, all about the bankers stealing the money with a psychic 16-year-old girl. Oh, really? Oh, no, I don't... Oh, yeah, I think I... Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, don't worry. Um, she's working on version 2. My advice is to um, wait for version 2. Uh, you might have to wait a few months, but she spent five years building it. Uh, yeah, I think actually I read something about that on your site. That, okay. uh, yeah, like the total conversion. She, she was from Japan or something? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, the, the girl character is from Korea, I think, and but but the actual designer, I, I don't know where she's from. I've, I've only spoken to her on, you know, like text. I haven't spoken like this. Oh, uh, okay. So. I don't really know, but um, it would be interesting to get a you know a professional designer's point of view on, on something like that as well. Yeah, I should play it and I'm, I can write in that in that thread. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I've covered all my notes down here. Is there, is there anything you want to talk about? Anything that uh, is on your mind? Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, it's it's great to finally be able to release Mission Impossible, and I'm I'm really like searching through sites and stuff to to see what people write about it, and it's a lot of fun too be able to, to read about it from other people's perspectives. Mm. Also, I like mean, sorry. Uh, I like scour YouTube right now for like uh, like let's plays of it and stuff like that. Okay. Because that's like you know that's like seeing a, a demo of a of a play tester pretty much. Yeah. There you can really see where you did good work and where you did not so good work. And uh, any interesting comments? I don't watch any let's plays. I just don't have time. But. Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, uh, it's been pretty. It's been pretty fun. It seems to, uh, it seems to to work as uh, as levels. <laughs> I mean, generally the response has been very good. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, the the, the negatives have been very uniform. Like uh, it's been like a color correction, uh, low times to a certain extent, but that's to be expected. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking now on my site. I've got one person who gave it a maybe, but that was because of the. Uh, color correction. He really didn't like that. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven personal favorites, yeah, one included. Great. And then one, three, four, five, five play now. Which, I mean, it's not very many reviews, um, but generally they, they liked it. And uh, I'm sure it'll get reviewed more and more and more. Um, yeah, so generally people, people enjoyed it. What would, be, what would be, just to finish, what would be your favorite part? Either from a player's point of view or from a designer's point of view, just one segment that you could pick out. Hmm. Well, I really liked like the, the fireworks segment in the third one. I think it was really cool. And uh, well, I, like I, my favorite level is the almost the entire first level, which I thought was like the best level in in, in all of the four. So yeah, I think either that or the fireworks section. Hmm. I mean, for gameplay. I, I would probably agree with you. The first section, uh, the very first time I played it, was probably uh, the best one. Visually, it's hard to f it's hard to argue against the third section because when you're in the you know the caverns and you look up and down, I mean that's that's hard. And of course the humour at the end. But yeah. uh, I, I suppose it would be being fired in the canister for me. <laughs> that oh, was yeah. so funny. That's also true. Yeah, that's also a favourite. <laughs> I mean, I was going to mention, you know, when we started talking about Observatory, that there were no new mechanics in, you know, in um, in Mission Improbable. But of course, that's wrong. I mean, there's uh, lots of new things, but the mechanic really is that that canister thing. Is that hard <laughs> yeah. to do? Uh, it's, yeah, it was a bit tricky, but uh, it works now. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it works now. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you for taking the time, firstly for making the mod, and secondly for spending some time with me today. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
and uh, I'm so pleased to hear that you're going to carry on making things. So perhaps in you know six months, nine months, you'll know when it comes out. <laughs> we'll think. All right, great. Well, thanks very much for your time, and keep modding. Thank you. All right, goodbye. Bye bye.